What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. May the 5th be with you. I'm sure yesterday you enjoyed all the Star Wars content popping up everywhere, so today felt somehow empty. But don't worry, I got you covered. With more Star Wars content. This channel is mostly about LEGO Technic, cars, RC stuff, but I also like Star Wars. I reviewed a few smaller sets previously, but this time I wanted to go big. I never built a UCS set before, never had one, so when the opportunity came with the unmissable gift, as you probably saw in my post two weeks ago, I had to buy it. So here is the 75313 UCS 8080 set. Why this one? Well, there are multiple reasons. First of all, I wanted to see that famous impossible to take apart section that you know well. Second, I really have no space for the UCS Millennium Falcon, and the new land speeder does not seem to be very interesting. But most importantly, I wanted to show you that this is a Technic set in disguise. Many people think it is yet another Star Wars set with the usual building experience, except it's bigger. Well, if you are one of them, then better watch this video first. Let's get started. The box is really massive, no joke, here's the leap hair for scale. Otherwise the box looks cool, has very nice details all around, especially at the back, but I think it's really time to check what's inside. It opens on the side, which is a bit unusual. Let's pick this one. Lots of tapes to cut, have to turn it to access the lower ones, oh finally. Okay, this is a very cool design. Wow, this one is even cooler. And now, hmm, this seems to be a tiny little logistical issue. Inner box is upside down, outer box is okay. No wonder the empire failed. Let's remove the inner boxes and uh, okay, I guess I did not improve the situation. Okay, much better now, but I think I will need an even bigger photo table. This is quite impressive. First box has the base with the upper part of the legs, second is the rest of the legs, third is the body, and the fourth has the armor and the cockpit. Let's open the first one. I like the pattern on the top by the way, looks cool. So here are all the bags inside, and as I told you, this is mostly Technic. Classic Technic bricks in the first one, even more Technic bricks, bushes and connectors, flip-flop beams and panels, even more beams, frames, more panels. Clear as day, this is a Technic set, period. Change my mind. Now let's start building. The process begins with this massive Technic frame, looks like a creator expert vehicle base for the first site. Several stacked Technic bricks connected with pins all around. The structure is reinforced with multiple layers of plates, and then comes another Technic brick structure. Before the usual complaints about the childish color vomit in an 18 plus UCS Star Wars set start to flow, let me tell you, this makes sense. With the different colors it is super easy to identify the similar pieces with different length, you don't need to continuously count studs and holes to see which one needs to be used. Simple as that. If you want a monochromatic building experience, just wait until we start to assemble the exterior. The two joint frames form a super sturdy structure, but we will definitely need it. The build grows, and these studless Technic beams will hold the different layers together. This is how the structure looks like after the first phase. The second phase has mostly system pieces, and it has some interesting connections here and there. And my first mistake. These assemblies on the sides should be moved with one stud. I need two exposed rows here. That's why I couldn't align properly these thingies here. Now everything should fit. Yeah, it's a bit tricky, but now it goes in place. Creating angled surfaces with clips, another familiar building technique from Creator Expert. Things you don't expect in a Star Wars set, Technic rims. And these are actually new in light bluish grey, we only had them in black on the Defender and the Ferrari. This means you can upgrade your Ferrari with new wheels, but well, you can do it, but I don't think you really should do it. Back to the set. Unfortunately, the cool pattern of the rims does not seem to play a key role here, only the brim will be visible. So we have a nice particle accelerator or plasma cannon here or a lightsaber maybe? End of phase 2. This Technic turntable piece is new in dark bluish grey, was only used in this set so far. Now here is that notorious assembly that was supposed to be impossible to take apart according to some reports. Don't want to talk about it much, watch my linked video if you are interested in the details, and no. It is still not impossible to take apart, actually it's pretty easy to do. Let's move on. I can already see the usual question coming, why are the panels and bushes orange? Well, it's simple, to match Luke's outfit. But on the serious side, it's simple production optimization. 
This panel was used in two other 2021 and 2022 sets in orange, so they used it here as well since the internal color does not matter. I had to add 32 blue half pins in one take to this assembly, my fingers hurt. And since I had to make another one, it was actually 64 blue pins. And this assembly shows that Technic is not only used here because of the structural rigidity, it has functions as well. That warm gear will drive the turntable, allowing a precise adjustment of the legs joints. Due to the nature of the warm gear, it holds the turntable securely, it won't be able to move by itself. After a few panels and tiles, the structure is covered, time to attach it to the base. Oops, my bad. These pins were supposed to go here and not there, I always attach things symmetrically if I'm building an autopilot. This weird contraption with the CV joint at the end is actually a very useful tool. It can be used to adjust the angle of the legs in an easy and efficient way. Let me show you on the other side with the cover removed. It slides on the brown axle and you can rotate the worm gear. Amazing! And here you can see why that orange pin with bush had to be secured in place with that unorthodox part usage, as this should not move in under any circumstances, this connects the leg to the body. A little cover, let's move to phase 4. Well, this phase was less exciting as we had to repeat phase 3 again. This thing needs 4 legs, it's not a chicken walker after all. The only difference is the usage of white panels instead of orange ones. Why? First box is finished. Let's open the second box, here are the contents, we'll be building the rest of the legs. The build was not very repetitive so far, but this phase will become boring quickly. We are building four identical structures that are also symmetrical themselves, so basically we are doing the same thing 16 times. Well, almost the same thing, as the structure is not entirely symmetrical, one side is slightly different. This is more interesting. We've got this blue Technic gear with the 1x1 lift arm, and apparently this tire piece fits on it with just enough overhang to provide the necessary grip on the foot. Very cool. So, all items ready from phase 5. Phase 6 didn't get way more exciting so far. But now it suddenly is. We've got these brand new 6x6 curved gear rack pieces, I'm really looking forward to see how they will be used in other builds. In this case, they will be used as the key elements to distribute the weight of the whole model on the feet. According to the manual, Technic Design Master Marcus Cosma was responsible for this section. I am not surprised at all. Brilliant. And it will work even better if you don't forget to put in a key element. Now I only need to build it again 3 times or uh, 12 times or something like that. And we are done with phase 6. The last phase from box 2 clearly has the most pieces in one take so far, but I see lots of Technic again, so it's promising. We have some nice and colorful build again and an assembly that I think is more impossible to take apart than the previous one. Here's the 3 module long pin, it goes all the way in, now how can you pull it out? There are two solutions. The first is the less elegant one, but does not require extra tools. You can actually push that assembly out, the pins are flexible enough and then you can take the thing apart. The second requires another piece from the set, push it in the center of the pin and you can pull it out. I have to look this up, but this set might have the highest amount of blue half pins. And yes, I was right. 326 blue half pins, and the second one on the list is also a UCS Star Wars set. UCS Star Wars is technically technic, I told you. Time to cover the internals, and then comes the moment when these two parts are assembled, and I have to say that I did not expect this solution. Trying to show you what's going on here. So, those grey wheels are sitting on the top of the gear rack, and the black gears are running inside the gear rack where the teeth are. They hold the gear rack firmly from both sides and the whole assembly allows the articulation of the feet. Very cool. Time to add the cover, and then comes the moment when we attach the legs to the main assembly. Ok, maybe this position was not the best idea, but the manual is actually not super helpful either. I'm not sure how could I add the legs while it is standing. Anyway, problem solved and it's becoming huge. Have to take the camera further away. And it's surprisingly stable. Uh, by stable I mean it does not fall apart, but at this point don't try to pick the whole thing up. I did, and I was extremely lucky as I did not have to rebuild one or more legs completely. At this stage, only those double pins are holding the legs, and if you move it a little bit around, this happens. You really don't want this to happen if the table is not there. Anyway, we need more parts to secure this connection, and now it is safe to move around. One back to the photo table, final cover piece is added and this is the end of box 2. Let's open the third box and here's the only sticker sheet of the set. 
time to build the body, and the base is this massive frame with lots of different Technic bricks and pins. Well, this is definitely not my favorite building step. Well, at this point I think the design team is simply mocking people who are complaining about strange colors in a UCS or 18 plus set. Floor is ready, end of phase 8. A very cool way to create angled surfaces, we have a hinge on one side, a tow ball connection on the other side, it snaps in place perfectly. Don't skip geometric loss if you want to become a LEGO designer. Lots of classic system bricks used here, and the first stickers to apply, the iconic wall light panels from the Death Star. Do you know if these could be actually seen in other vehicles as well? Let me know in the comments. End of phase 9, you can see these studless Technic beams here providing support for the body, we have more wall covers with huge stickers to cover them. First of the many sand blue seats are also added, and here you can see why this funny base was built for the tobal sockets. It can only rotate a tiny little bit when it's in place, but that's the exact amount of movement required for that tobal connection to work. Very cool. First minifigs of the set to build, hello folks. Our next Technic Messy frame is the upper deck. Time to put it in place. A cool little trick, that green pyramid helps with the proper placement as it guides the Technic frame. The yellow beams provide additional internal support once we secure them with the orange pins, and those hatches can be now closed. Time to add another set of seats, but I sense a disturbance in the force. First of all, this step shows parts that are not added yet, they will only come in the next step. Second, we have 4 seats on each side, but only 3 blaster holders per row, that will be a problem. A few more seats added, end of phase 10. Time to build the next section, and as you see we will have some very interesting structural solutions, built using Technic pieces of course. The solution used by the designers is truly amazing. We have these motorcycle rims, and this flexible rod in the center is one key element. That's the single piece connecting the rims together, therefore the connection is still very flexible. I love the functional design of that studless studied Technic sandwich, it connects the last rim with the two pins, and meanwhile provides attachment points to the long rods. And the whole system works flawlessly and it's super solid, this is how the rotating neck is built. These pieces are part of the original design as well, they are here to prevent the twisting motion of the neck. And how to control the neck? This red axle slides all the way in, then we have this weird small Technic assembly. Note how it has two axle holes, but we have a pin and an axle there, so it cannot slide on them fully when it is centered. But here's the trick, when you rotate the red axle, you can push it down and secure it in that position. Slide it up, and you can do the same on the other side. This way you have three fixed head positions to display your AT-80. How cool is that? Here comes the rear panel, this one already has many details added, phase 11 finished. Here's a little easter egg, even the AT-80s are powered by octane fuel cells, everything is connected. I really wish these guys had an elevator, took some time to assemble this thing. We continue building the frame on the top and on the sides with studless beams. And now, after installing these four yellow L-beams comes the moment of truth, the marriage. It goes in place surprisingly easily, now it's time to secure the top with these axles. Oops, nope, it wasn't that easy actually. Ok, first issue found, the orientation of this piece is wrong, now let's try it again. Yeah, much better now. But interestingly those axles are not held in place by anything, they just slide in. And I really shouldn't try this. I guess they will be covered, but good luck taking them out and not breaking anything on the legs meanwhile. Last phase from box 3, covering up the base. This thing here only connects with a single stud, I'm not sure what was the concept here, very easy to knock off. So, end of box 3 and that cover fell down. A piece of advice, don't try to lift it up by grabbing the belly. I think I won't put that one back until the end. Even more fix in box 4. We start building the cockpit, and we have everything here again. Classic techniques, studless techniques, system bricks, and everything fits together. I love the details of General Weir's command center and the seats for the pilots. What a cool structure at the front to achieve that iconic look. Even better with the side panels. Now here's a tiny detail that is actually brilliant. As you see there are hinges at one end, and the holes don't line up perfectly on the other end. How to fix it? Here's this piece, it starts as a half pin but it has a narrower rod on the other end, fits in the pinhole perfectly and secures the whole thing in place. Mind blown. And the guys even got a nice view at the local ski resort. This is how the build looks like at the end of phase 14. What parts do you need for a class 2 heavy laser cannon? 
some system pieces, a long axle, an old school jet engine, some connectors, a driving ring extension and a CV joint. Easy peasy and it's ready to pew 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 pew! Looks quite simple for the first sight, but it's a pretty complex and dense snot build. Mounting the head is a bit challenging and here's an axle for securing it in place. Ok, that's an interesting way of mounting plates. I won't go into the details, but this assembly alone has so many cool techniques and this is the first one that shows how these removable panels are attached to the main assembly. The next two phases have something similar, only in a much bigger scale. We build the two huge side panels, here they are. I won't put them on yet, since there are many things to put in the walker. The last phase is also about cover panels and a few additional accessories, and here is the end result, barely fits on my photo table. You can see the minifix there, the UCS plug, all the removable panels from the body, the accessories, and the belly cover that I still need to put back somehow. Phew, at least that one is in place. Now let's try to put on all the rest. The top should be straightforward, central one is the easiest as that has proper support, the two others only have those tiny red axles that need to go in the holes of the plates at the bottom, need some practice to find their proper position. The side panels, wow, uh, how this should fit? Ah, okay, it's actually for the other side, makes sense now. I would need to fit those brown pieces with the pinholes on the axles, this is definitely not easy. And how these two supposed to be aligned? Ah, ok, this is better now. I still have the one on the other side, but I would need to turn the beast around. Ok, let's put this one on and finished. But I forgot to put everyone in. Anyway, let's see the exterior first. This thing is massive, you really can't imagine. Ok, here are some references for comparison. I'm sure you've seen it already with many other Star Wars sets, now here are some technic ones. Here are all the minifigures we get in the set and considering that we have seats for 40 snow troopers and this is an $800 set, we didn't get too many of them. A minifig scale at would definitely deserve more. Here are the pilots and the general in the cockpit, the access is a bit challenging here. And here's Luke hanging around casually with his thermal detonator. We've got huge cargo doors on both sides that have an interesting opening mechanism, but they are not that easy to operate, you really need to be careful with these covers. Now let's remove all panels again. The interior is very detailed and this is something new for a UCS set. Here are the two speeder bikes included, they can be placed on either side at the rear. We also get this heavy repeating blaster that can be stored there. I showed you most of the functions during the build, but let's do a recap. You can play with the laser cannons, rotate the neck and also have it fixed in different positions, adjust the position of the legs and open the cargo doors. There are some instructions by the way at the end of the manual about the advised leg positions and also how to lift the build up. I wish they were shown earlier as the model is already standing on its legs at the middle of the building process, so it would be really useful to know how to manage it. But on the other hand I actually don't really suggest to follow the advice of the manual, as you could see previously that cover on the lower side of the body can fall off fairly easily if you touch it. You can either grab the rims on the bottom with two hands, or if you don't have the covers on, then the safest is probably to lift the model this way by using the internal structure of the body. Moving it around is definitely a better idea without the side panels, those pins hold their position most of the times, but if they fall off, then you will have a lot of things to assemble. So, this is a set that costs 800 euros or dollars. That is a lot of money, even for a behemoth like this. And I think people should think twice if they want to spend that amount on this set. Don't get me wrong, I think the building experience is great and the end result is more than impressive. But I'm not sure every Star Wars fan will be truly happy with this type of building experience. I mean, half of the build or I would say even a bit more is pure Technic. I personally like Technic and Star Wars, so it's a win-win for me. But for the majority of LEGO fans, Technic is something weird and not even considered to be a real LEGO, so this set might be a letdown for them. If you are a huge Star Wars fan and you want a truly iconic and impressive display piece, and you are also interested in some technical building experience, 
and you also got the money, then it's a great set for you. If you are a Star Wars fan, but you don't like Technic, then I really can't recommend this set. If you are a Technic fan who likes Star Wars as well, then first think about all the plates and panels covering the model. If you are willing to build those, then you will have fun for sure. And I'm sure you will appreciate the fact that most of the covers on the bottom side are also fairly easy to remove, revealing the cool Technic structure beneath. If you are a Technic fan but don't like stacking plates, then for the same price you can get a bunch of other Technic sets, although you better choose them wisely, as some of those might have even less functions than this one here. How to sum it up? For me, the build was mostly enjoyable, I really liked the Technic aspect, not only providing the structure of the set this time, but there are multiple interesting functions as well. There were some repetitions, and I'm not the biggest fan of plate and brick stacking, but the impressive end result definitely compensated that part of the build. The functions are great, the full interior with the removable panels is a very nice extra that I did not see in a UCS set before, although the build needs to be handled carefully, and altogether it's better to strip down the model before moving it around. About the stability, it is okay for display, but it is still not a playset for sure. Is it worth the price? That will be different for everyone. You can get tons of play experience with several sets for this amount of money, something that this at won't be able to offer. But if you are looking for an amazing display piece from the Star Wars universe that does not require its own coffee table, then it is really hard to beat. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. I strongly suggest to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye!